Hello and welcome to Differential Discussions. I'm Melissa. And I'm Dave. And today we're going to look at a manual reticulous site count. Yay! Yay. <laughs> Melissa, it's all bluish green. What's going on? Bluish green. <laughs> yeah, so this is look like right stain. No, this is not a right stain. This is probably a methylene blue stain, a, a super vital stain. Super vital? What? Yeah. So <laughs> super vital stains are mixed with the blood before the blood is fixed onto the slide. So while the cells are, cells are still alive and they're still actively going through their metabolism, this way they can take this, the stain up into their metabolism and it can stain the internal contents of that cell. So the reticular material, because that's what reticulocytes have. They have RNA, that reticular material. So we're looking to stain that inner content so that we can see which ones are retics. Mm -hmm. So yeah, um, so this is a, a manually done procedure. It's typically like a one-to-one -one whole blood to stain, yep. incubate for whatever your procedure calls for. It was like 10 minutes or something like that, right? Yep. Um, <clears throat> when you do smear these out and make the slide, uh, use less volume than you normally would. These, uh, because it's diluted, they smear kind of long, right? It's kind of, okay. when you make a push bro. Um, Yeah, so, you know, why would we do a retic manually like this, right? Can't my really exp expensive XN analyzer uh, do a retic? If you have a really expensive, <laughs> that's a great point, right? <laughs> so we could all work at an uh, an institution that just chooses not to have the retic reagent, even, right? So um, it's you know they can be a cost per test can be really expensive uh, relative to the manual procedure, right? So. Um, Maybe yes. we could talk about why would you want a reticulocyte result too, right? Okay, yeah. Well, let's so, talk about let's I guess keep going about how like why would you do one? Yeah, sure. So um, you would do one, like we said, you know, if your instrument has doesn't have retic, mm -hmm. and like Dave said, sometimes it's expensive. Mm -hmm. Like for example, the XNs at school, I think they have the capability of doing manual retics, but mm -hmm. we're not going to purchase that reagent. Yeah way too expensive uh, but some smaller laboratories may say the same thing yeah right absolutely depending on their population too right i mean um so i, I mean physician or clinical team might order a reticulocyte count uh in assessing erythropoiesis right is the bone marrow responding appropriately bouncing back from an anemia um reticulocyte counts are also helpful in the differential diagnosis of a hemolytic process so uh, commonly, the reticulocyte count will be elevated in a in a hemolytic process. Um, yep. But yeah. Versus if you're dealing with like bone marrow failure. Yep. Aplasias, or even something as simple as IDA, where the patient isn't getting iron, then your retics are all going to be decreased because yep. you have decreased output. Different yep. reasons, right? MDS, right. or if you're dealing with aplasia, it's because your bone marrow says, no, I'm done. And I'm yep. not putting any more out versus iron deficiencies. You just don't have enough iron to create more. But the point of the retake is telling you whether it's increased or decreased so that you know if the bone marrow is actively putting out those reticulocytes or not. Right, right. I think there was one other thing we forgot to cover too, is that sometimes the our expensive fancy analyzer might not be so sure of the raw data that it gets uh, spit out. So you can get like abnormal scattergrams and perhaps they don't clear with a dilution procedure or something like that. And then we have to kind of fall back to this. We would see that from time to time with like sickle cell patients and stuff, right? Um, the other thing that you could see with re uh, reticulocytes on sickle cell patients is that they exceed linearity. Yeah, that's it. I forgot about that. The analyzers. Too. And so some <laughs> analyzers, you hit the line, you exceed linearity and then you have to either report out greater than X percent or do a manual reticulocyte count. Yep. And don't get me started because I feel like greater than X percent is totally legitimate results for a retic, but that's another topic, another rant. Yeah. Um, but either way, everyone needs to know how to do a manual retic. Yes, absolutely. Because they may have to do it at some point. Mm -hmm. And so, so uh, procedurally, uh, we're counting red cells. Is that the best way to <laughs> counting and classifying? Basically, this blood parasite speciation, Clyhauer Betkeys. It's you're just going to count a ton of red cells. <laughs> Got to get those thumbs working. Yeah. 
yeah, with clickers. So um, with your retic, you have to count the number of reticulated cells out of a thousand red cells. Mm -hmm. Yep. So today we are not going to count a thousand red cells. We're just going to go over what do these reticulocytes actually look like. Yep. All right, cool. So we have a pretty good field that we're starting on here. Um, I should probably bring up my my doodle machine, uh, my annotation machine here. And some really good retics, like these are some really prominent ones, right? There's two here. I'm gonna skip one on purpose too. These are all good retics. And so what you should see is all of your red cells will kind of have this bluish kind of green staining to it. You'll notice that some have different intensities on the staining, right? So I'm gonna to point to this fella. Um, that doesn't mean it's a retic. <laughs> so we're not looking at, um, that's just more the concentration of the uh, the hemoglobin, right? That's uh, causing that coloration. But we wanna look for these small blue dots. And then we're gonna to have to try to delineate um, you know, when we want to call it and when we don't. So you'll have some cells like this one, Melissa, what do you think, right? I see some of those reticulin fibers in there. Yeah. But like, is it enough to call? I think that can kind of vary a little bit. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I mean, I would say the, what I have circled here are my retics. And I think I'm missing one at the top. Yep, yeah. there it is. My annotation bar was covering it. You so, were yeah. too, like this guy looks like he's got a couple of reticular yep. pieces in there too. Yep. I don't think I would call that one. Personally, no, I try to keep it at the, you know, we have to, this is where it does get a little bit tricky too, right? Is um, uh, you can kind of overcall. Um, so yeah, I would call this one, but I may not call this one. <clears throat> yeah. And, and I think it just, has to do with the amount of those reticular of the reticular material because I feel like this one has a little bit more mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then this one those are just dots and are they dots are they reticular dots or yeah. are they Pappenheimer bodies yep so that a little bit of question and ambiguity makes me just say no thank you yeah um, yeah and I think that's the other important thing with reticulocytes the manual retic count is you have to distinguish is it reticular material or is it how jolly body pappenheimer bodies basophilic stippling yep yep yeah all of the above will stain as well so yeah. we'd be and careful typically, typically if you're performing a manual retic at least in the clinical setting you're probably going to be doing it on your really sick patients like yeah. a sickler and yep. those patients are going to have how jolly bodies and pappenheimer bodies and you know basophilic stippling which makes it even more challenging yeah. Isn't it that situation too, where if you're at like these big institutions and you know, you have to do a retic, it's like, oh, cause you know, it's not going to be like this retic, right? It's going to be more of a slog to get yep. through. Yeah. Yeah. This one's straightforward. So, I, do, yeah. I do like that you brought up the, the color intensity of the red cell is not indicative of reticular material. Yes. Cause I think so many students go into it thinking, Hey, this is a retic right there because it's darker than the other ones. No, it has to do with the reticular fibers, the RNA. Remember, RNA is a strand. So it has to do with the RNA that you're actually seeing. And yes, you remember in right stain, we talked about how it stained a certain color. It's going to stain a certain way in here as well. And it's not just going to shade the cytoplasm. We're staining the internal content so we can actually see those reticular fibers. Yes. Yep. <clears throat> Um, and so I would say retic counts generally do kind of follow like a polychromasia call on the right stain, but we should still be like careful, right? Like um, there are different procedures. Uh, so, yeah. You want to look at another field? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Let me clear all my mess off of here. We can <laughs> go to another field. Yeah. Yeah, I like this. <clears throat> yeah we have some that are like overwhelming right yeah a lot of good stuff in there um 
yeah, there's a, there's a fair amount of uh, retics here. Uh, I'm actually curious to see if we see like a white cell too, right? Because mm. um, should we try to look for like a, a white blood cell so we can... Yeah. Do you want me to do that now or do you want to point out all the retics first? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, maybe I'll just stay on, on, on topic here. So let's see. And you tell me what you think, right? But I'm going to just be circling away. Get this one down there. I'm getting sloppier. <laughs> what we got one here, good one there, and we got. I'm gonna be lazy and just circle these two as individuals. Yeah, what do you think? Yeah, you missing me? No. Cool. So yeah, that would be yeah. our retics for that field. This is a pretty high retic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So just as a, a reminder, when you're counting cells, red cells, you count the number of red cells and then the number of reticulous, reticulated cells per a thousand red cells. And so your thousand red cells includes all of your red cells. So reticulocytes are still red cells. They are. <laughs> yep. All right, let's scoot around and see if we can find a white cell. I mean, if we see anything really cool with retics too, we'll stop. But oh, here we go. Yeah, there we go. So they kind of look like ghosty, smudgy looking. Ooh. Sorry, I'm like circling with the trackpad, and it's not, <laughs> it's not the easiest. Right. But yeah, it looks to be a white cell right there. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I'm playing with the fine tune because it's kind of hard to see it. Yeah, they are, they're, they're, they're generally a little harder to visualize. And uh, and to, uh, honestly, for the better, right? Because we were not even, we shouldn't even be focusing on them. Um, but just so that individuals see. Sometimes I'm doing a retic count and you just almost zone out and you're, you're like, wait, I, don't, I haven't even seen a white cell in hi however long, right? Uh, so obviously there's a lot more red cells than there are white cells. And... Yeah, and you just don't pay attention to the whites when you're counting retics. Yeah, it's almost just like background noise. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So what else? Um. We have any other interesting tidbits to add? I was just wondering if there were the platelets, what they look like in here. Especially if they're sitting on a... Well, here's a platelet. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Is that a big one? Yeah. Yeah, and again, just kind of like ghosty looking, which yeah. is for the better for the most part. There's yeah. less stuff I have to pay attention to. Well, I'm, I'm just thinking about when platelets sit on red cells. Sure. Yeah, that could be confusing, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. but I think if it looks ghosty like that, then it wouldn't be an issue. Right. Um, I've never really even seen a platelet on I a red know. cell in a retic, a manual retic, or at least I've never noticed. Yeah, no, it's a good point. And I, I think it's likely just because of the the dilution factor, right? Like the the fact that we dilute out the blood. And so it's, and you know what? Maybe for the, to uh, as we end here, let's go really thick, right? Um, because even the thickest area is not going to get, um, shouldn't be like too crazy. You want to get rid of your drawing? Oh, yeah, yep, yep, absolutely. Yeah, see, this is the brilliant part about it. It's just yeah, I'm I'm really thick into the side. I'm almost at yep. the edge. Yep. So I I suppose it could be possible. Um, what should happen, right? Theoretically, is that platelet should be displacing the part of the cytoplasm, yeah. and you should get a disturbance in the staining of the hemoglobin. Because we can see here, the hemoglobin is staining pretty well. This greenish, uh, blue, or teal. Sea foam. I don't know. My color palette is not <laughs> my color vocabulary is not the most oh. sophisticated. <laughs> um, so I'd imagine that the platelet would influence that. But. Yeah, and I think it would be easier to tell that it's a platelet on a red cell in this stain than it is in right stain. A good, great point. Yep, great point. Given the super vital uh, and the characteristics of the stain. Yeah, I think the only way you can really tell this is a thicker area is because the red cells, I guess, are a hair smaller. 
Yeah. Yep. But even that, it's like I don't yeah. know. This is still a decent area. Yep. And that's just because, like you were saying, the thinness of the the liquid, how watery. And, think of, and like, let's think about it too. This is a high retic. This patient's probably anemic or yeah. at least rebounding from an anemia. That coupled with the procedure, the one parts to one part, it's gonna be a, on the thinner side. And this is just junk. Just junk. Yep. See how it's kind of grayish in color on on that red cell? That mm -hmm. just looks like artifact. Yep. That's the standing artifact. Yep. But like you're looking for the blue reticular material here. Mm -hmm. you see, it's different from that. Yep. Those artifacts, I imagine, if you played with the fine focus, they would kind of like get oh, darker and lighter. Oh, yeah. Yep. No, yep. Yeah, the fact that they go from like dark to, to clear to translucent, that's just probably a drying artifact or yeah. some junk. <clears throat> cool. cool. All right. Well, I think that's all we have for this video. So thanks for watching. Thanks for your time. Please like, subscribe, and hit the bell if you'd like notifications whenever we post a new video. And feel free to reach out to us on social media or via email with comments or suggestions about future content. Thanks.